What's going on guys? The Area Lords here. Um doing a, another vlog for you guys. Uh this one is on some more recent news regarding the show. Uh some news that just literally came out of nowhere. I saw this on Instagram, saw it on Walking Dead's Twitter page, saw it in a couple places, just kind of floating around there. Thought I'd make a vlog about it. Um Apparently Dwight is going to be in the in Fear of the Walking Dead. He's going to be the second crossover character. The first crossover character obviously being Morgan. <clears throat> and uh, apparently Dwight is going to be on Fear the Walking Dead. Now this in all in all in all fairness, this kind of makes sense with the storyline because there was a year and a half time jump. So from season 8 to season 9, there was a year and a half time jump. And Dwight was doing something in between that period of time. So it's probably reasonable that he went somewhere else. And Daryl did say that if he saw Dwight anywhere near their area again, that he would kill him. Uh, so I guess just coincidentally, he'll be meeting up with the Fear the Walking Dead cast. Now, it is worth noting, and I did go back to look at this, that Morgan and Dwight don't actually share any notable scenes together. Uh... They they don't like I'm I know Morgan must know who Dwight is but they're they've never really been on screen like they've never talked they're they they, they just obviously Morgan knows who he is probably knows that Rick is getting a lot of his insider information about the saviors from Dwight but Morgan's the only character who would recognize Dwight uh, all of the other Fear the Walking Dead cast members wouldn't they he would just be like a newbie. Um, however, with Fear the Walking Dead, like, this would actually give you an interesting opportunity to give Dwight, uh, some more character development, uh, because as we've saw with, uh, Dor John Dory and some of the other characters in Fear the Walking Dead, especially in season four, they had those episode centric, like the episodes where they just focused on a character, and they embellished upon their story. Well, if they did that with Dwight, you know, we could get more of his character. Because I did feel like he kind of got snubbed from some scenes of season 7 and 8. I never felt like his story was really finished. Uh, they started telling his story when the Saviors were introduced. In the episode Always Accountable, season 6, episode 6, when really the Saviors are first introduced and Daryl, Rosita, or not, not Rosita, Daryl... Sasha and Abraham encounter them and then Daryl goes off on his own gets lost and then Dwight and Sherry and the sister think that Daryl is with the saviors they knock him out uh there's that whole sequence and then they find out he's not with the saviors but Dwight is frightened and he ends up taking Daryl's crossbow and bike and then just leaves Daryl on the um in the woods it sets that whole thing up. And then in season seven, we see that Negan married Sherry. Negan has that whole monologue in the beginning of that episode, season seven, episode three, where he says Sherry would marry Negan if Negan didn't kill Dwight because the sister died. The sister was apparently the one that Negan wanted to marry. Uh, we see a few scenes between Sherry and Negan, and then Sherry just leaves. She releases Daryl from prison, which is the big contribution she has. And then Dwight finds a lengthy note from her. A few episodes later, he goes to their old house. Uh, she says that she's sorry that she turned him into such a monster, that he should confront who he really is instead of being this, this asshole. Um, but we never, we never really find out what happens to her. Like she, only, she had this very brief story where she made a sacrifice uh, for Dwight, and then we never have any conclusion with it. At the end of season eight, we see that Dwight found, she finds a note, or he finds a note from Sherry, saying that he said honeymoon on it. I guess she went where their honeymoon is, or just giving him a clue as to where, where she might be. And Dwight smiles when he sees that note, meaning that he must know where she is. So, will Sherry be joining Dwight in Fear the Walking Dead? Because the only announcement that I heard was that Dwight was... Austin Emilio, who plays Dwight, would be joining the Walking Dead. I didn't hear anything about Sherry. I, I forget the name of the actress who plays her, but... I didn't hear anything about her joining um, Fear the Walking Dead. She really didn't do that many episodes of The Walking Dead. She was in the episode which she was first introduced, Always Accountable. 
And then she was in the episode in the sanctuary where she sees Daryl, which so and then episode three and then seven, where you you know you you learn a little bit more about her and then she releases Daryl at the end of the episode and that's it. And then she does the voiceover for her letter while Dwight's reading it a few episodes later, but she's not really she's not in the episode. She just she just runs off. She just goes somewhere and. That was always something that was frustrating to me because I thought that in either at the end of season seven or somewhere in season eight, I thought that she would come into play, especially in All Out War. I thought Sherry would come into play. Like, did she go somewhere? Did she go to another savior base that was maybe made up of uh, like minded saviors who weren't who didn't like Negan or Simon and they were kind of rebellious? Did she go to one of... I, I originally thought that Sherry went to Oceanside. Like, when she left that note and ran away, uh, I thought she went to Oceanside because that's a community of all women. It's a community that's hiding, obviously, from the saviors. So maybe she would have knowledge of that and would go seeking refuge. And because she's a woman, maybe it would vote over well with them. That was my original thing, but, like, we don't know where she went. Apparently, she went wherever their honeymoon is, some secret location. Dwight knows where she is, and it's assumed that Dwight found her in this year-and-a-half time span. And then they traveled all the way west to, like, the Texas Midwestern area. And now she they're going to meet up with Morgan and crew. I guess. Um... The thing that's frustrating for me is that Dwight's story really revolved around the saviors, because... In the comic books, which is totally different, Dwight stays, he takes over leadership of the Sanctuary, uh, the Sanctuary does not collapse, uh, it actually thrives, and it has a couple of different leadership changes, and then Dwight eventually leaves his position as leader of the Saviors, and then pretty much goes back to Alexandria to be, like, Rick's right-hand man. Now, keep in mind, there's no Daryl, for you, those of you who don't read the comics, there's no Daryl in the comics. Daryl's character does not exist. Daryl's character was made for the show. Uh, Norman Reedus tried out for the part of Merle. And because they didn't think that he gave off the vibe they were looking for for Merle, uh, they made another brother, Daryl. And ironically, Merle just, he only lasted, what, a few episodes of season one, chunk of season three, and then they killed him off. And Daryl is... You know, fucking, you could argue the main character of the show now, now that Rick is gone. Um, so, you had that, and, um, I, for the show, I feel like they kind of slighted Dwight a little bit. I felt that, or I still feel that Dwight, they, I, I did appreciate at the end of season eight, that they gave Dwight some closure because Dwight was putting himself on the line the entirety of season eight to help Rick and his crew win the war. And then he gets caught. He gets into this pickle situation because Simon's trying to take over the sanctuary and uh, Negan kind of knows about it. And so Dwight has to pick a side, but Dwight obviously has his own plans trying to help out Rick and Daryl. And so, you know, he picks his side and then Negan sets him up. He takes him prisoner for that episode, but then obviously when Eugene disguises all of the of the b b bullets, makes them explode, uh, Dwight gets out of that situation. D it looks like Daryl's going to take him to the woods to kill him, but then Daryl shows him mercy because Dwight is very sorry for what he did, gives him a car, he says, you know, go find Sherry, and then that's it. Like, they... they, they... It frustrated me that Daryl didn't embrace him into the community. Like, think about what Rick did with, um, think about what Rick did with Jadis, where at the end of, of that same episode, that very same episode where Negan's defeated and Dwight is told to go away and if I ever see you again, I'll kill you. Morgan, obviously Morgan's dealing with his own storyline, but Morgan goes to the junkyard, tells Jadis... Uh, oh, hey, Rick says that you can come back to the communities and be a part of the communities if you want to do it. Jadis asks why, and Morgan says because it's all about people now, and she actually accepts the offer. For the first year and a half, she is with uh, Rick's group, and they call her Anne, and she 
you know, obviously because we see the events of what eventually happens to her with the helicopter and Rick, but like, it seems like she at least assimilated for a bit. Hell, she had like a brief flingy relationship with Father Gabriel that really didn't go anywhere. I don't even know why they built that up for, for fucking no reason. But, um, yeah, she had this brief fling with Father Gabriel, and it seemed to work out for her. Like, she found a place in Rick's little future post-Savior War. I don't know why they didn't do that for Dwight. Like, why didn't... Because it would really come full circle, because this whole Savior conflict started in that episode, Always Accountable, when Daryl ran into Dwight and Sherry. And I think if Daryl had this redemptive moment where he's like, all right, Dwight, if you can go find your wife... Um, then, you know, you can become a part of this community that we are now trying to build this future. Um, because, you know, that was, that was originally what Daryl was trying to do. He was originally trying to bring Dwight and Sherry back to Alexandria. That could, and they were, they agreed, they agreed to it. Like when they were digging the grave for Sherry's sister, um, Daryl said, he's like, I'm from a place that has good people. And then... It, that sequence still confuses me because uh, Dwight and Sherry are like, you know, where are your people? Where are they? And Daryl's like kind of just saying like, I don't know where they are. We're just going to figure it out. And I guess they were just, they, I don't know. They didn't want to take that chance. Maybe they thought that the saviors captured them. or It would be too much of a risk because the saviors were too powerful. I'm not, I, I'm not really sure. Um, obviously, a lot would have changed if Dwight and... We should do, like, a what-if video. I mean, I'm kind of doing it right now, but what if Dwight and Sherry had just gone with Daryl in Season 6, had actually gone back to um, Alexandria? Keep in mind, if they had, they would... So, a couple of things. Daryl wouldn't have found the tanker because... He found the oil tanker because his motorcycle was taken and he needed another form of transportation. So he found the oil tanker um, and then he went and found Sasha and Abraham. Now, I don't that Sasha and Abraham wouldn't have been able to fit on Daryl's motorcycle with Dwight and Sherry also with them. Um so they probably would have had to have, maybe, I don't know, maybe they would have ended up scavenging the oil tanker anyway, maybe, um, because they needed another vehicle that all of them could fit on. That's true. That's very, that's a very valid point. Um, however, you do recall when they ran into the bikers, that biker blockade, um, the guy who's, who says your property now belongs to Negan. I would guarantee you he probably knows who, he probably knows who Dwight is. So when he sees you know he says you know all you get out of the truck or whatever he would see Dwight and be like yo like these guys like I feel like that encounter would have gone differently because when the bikers stop Daryl Sasha and Abraham they don't know who they are but if Dwight and Sherry are there they might say oh we recognize you and they might maybe just shoot first and not take the chance for Daryl to go around back and get the rocket launcher. I don't know. Lots of what ifs, but I mean, I don't want to make the whole vlog about that, but, um, I guess, I guess on the one hand, what I'm trying to say in this vlog overall is that I'm happy that Dwight is not just cut out of the story and given some stupid, because people were saying like, oh, he's with the whisperers. And I'm like, there's no, there's no reason for him to be with the whisperers. Like he's, he's a normal human. He doesn't believe in the savagery of wearing zombie faces like Alpha and Beta and their whole civilization do. And his story is tied to the saviors. He wasn't tied to the whispers. It would just be weird. It would just it would just come out of nowhere. It would just be really dumb to bring back a character for no reason. Um, so Fear the Walking Dead is kind of your next best bet. Like, it's really the only way you can bring back the character. Like, there's no way you could say, oh yeah... Seven and a half years later, Dwight and Sherry come back and they are seeking Daryl's forgiveness. Like, what, seven and a half years later, they're going to come back asking Daryl to join the thing? Like, what the... I, you know, by that point, it's, it's, you know, I don't know. Dwight and Sherry might be dead by that point. I mean, we still don't know where the Fear the Walking Dead timeline joins up with the Walking Dead. I, and, I mean, just so you guys know, I've watched season one of Fear the Walking Dead and then I watched half of season four. Up until the point where the show were like really drastically changed, Nick and Madison were killed off. So, um, 
And then I, I didn't watch the second half. All I know, I, it just, because it looked boring to me. It just didn't. I, I looked up on the wiki, like, what happens. And I guess by the end, you know, Morgan's still alive. Um, and they're basically, like, trying to help people, you know, just, you know, people who are in distress. They're like a, they're like a merry band of, like, like they're like an, uh, like a convoy of, like, you know, good Samaritans helping people who are, you know, screwed in the zombie apocalypse. That seems to be the consensus they come to after losing that baseball stadium in the mid-season finale of season four. What they do next, I don't know. I'm not invested in it. I mean, maybe I'll watch a couple of episodes that Dwight's in just to see what happens to him. But, like, he most likely will die at some point. Like, there's no way they can catch up to the six-year time jump that The Walking Dead did. Like, I just... It, it puts so much distance between The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead where it's like, how the hell is Fear the Walking Dead going to catch up? Like, a year and a half time jump is reasonable, but unless the Fear the Walking Dead crew settles in some, like, nice community where they're safe for a period of time, and then they're like, oh, then it time jumps, and then they meet it, and then it's, it's I don't know. I still don't know what the hell Fear the Walking Dead's doing. Like, like I don't know what the purpose of that show is, where they're going with it. Like, The Walking Dead is obviously trying to salvage uh, adapting the comic books without Rick and Carl the best it can. You got the movies, which are completely original with Rick, which might be the most interesting thing right now, other than, you know, how the whispers are being portrayed in the main show. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the hell Fear the Walking Dead's doing. I really don't. Like, now that Morgan and Dwight are in it, I mean, yeah, you got two A-listers from the main show, but, like... But, like, what's the end goal? Like, I don't know. It just, it's like The Walking Dead 2.0 telling this alternate story for just, like, no reason. Like, when Fear the Walking Dead was first pitched, it was before the the apocalypse. It was when society was normal, and you were going to see, you know, how the apocalypse started. But within six episodes, the world had gone to shit. And, it, and then it was like, uh, this is everything that I already saw in The Walking Dead, where there's this mysterious outbreak and no one knows how to deal with the zombies and but then they learn how to deal with the zombies and then they use them as weapons and then they find gated communities and there are other asshole groups it's the same thematic journey that i had with the walking dead with rick going on the farm and then the prison and then terminus and alexandria and the saviors the whole it's the same thing with different characters and it's like well I, you know I, I don't i don't it's just it's just too much the same just too much the same and i you know i'm willing to give the show a shot but to some degree i'm just like guys like do something different like i thought fear the walking dead was going to be a longer process maybe the scientists the doctors the you know how did the zombie outbreak start we don't know and fucking robert kirkman so full of himself and you know i will go out and say this you know i don't want to insult him G you know genius guy who came up with the whole walking dead idea still pumps out the comics i give him credit but I just, it's, it's, it's a little bit of self-aggrandizing here uh, with, with his whole, oh, I'm not going to talk about how the zombie apocalypse started. You know, I don't want this to be one of those films or shows that talks about, you know, like World War Z with Brad Pitt. Like, how do we beat the zombie outbreak? Oh, I got to infect myself and then the zombies won't bite me. Like, he doesn't want it to be that. But, like, you don't have to have some miracle fucking cure solution like I Am Legend or World War Z where the whole thing's solved in an hour. You can do... You could do alternate stuff. And apparently, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but when Robert Kirkman was first pitching the Walking Dead comic, he actually had to make it, like, science fiction. He said that aliens dropped this mysterious virus on Earth and it spread the infection, and there was some other endgame there, but apparently that never came to fruition. That was just a ploy, or it was just like an initial tantalizing idea to get the publishers of this fucking comic, because of course, of course, the publishers they just want to make money, so they wouldn't believe the original concept of, you know, a guy waking up in a hospital and trying to find his family in an apocalypse. No, nope, that idea is too boring. Let's just say, like, aliens cause the apocalypse. You know, aliens and zombies, too. You know, people like those things. Oh, if they're together, like, it's just, again, ex executives of higher entertainment powers trying to, th you know, they're trying to think ahead of the curve. You know, they know better than the creators who are constantly thinking of these ideas day in and day out, trying to entertain people. But, you know, the guys in the big business suits with the ties, they know what's going on, right? 
Oh, anyway, I'm getting into a huge rant here, but, um, I don't want to go off too off topic, but, um, yeah, I, with Kirkman, I just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of stagnation and I'm really hoping that the movies, hey, hey, you know what, actually, maybe the movies, maybe that's what Kirkman's endgame here is, maybe he's like, oh, this is my opportunity to tell a totally new, unique story using a fan favorite character in Rick Grimes, and maybe they'll finally talk about how the apocalypse started, maybe this whole helicopter A and B thing with Jadis, maybe this is finally how we're going to start understanding more about this world from that behind the scenes angle, because again, the show has just been about the surviving and trying to make civilization. And we've had a lot of cool themes and the show's been very entertaining and interesting and the you know, turns and stuff. But, you know, there's definitely that extra piece that could really get people interested. And I think the movies is the opportunity to do it. So um, we'll have to wait on the movies. I know there's a lot of production going on with the movies. By the end of 2019, we should have some interesting details on that. So stay tuned. Um... But what do you guys think about Dwight going to Fear the Walking Dead? Comment below. Um, I I just, I don't know. I, I feel like his story was more... Because think, like he's the only character from The Walking Dead he's going to have interactions with is Morgan. And it, it just doesn't make sense to me because he had, like, in the comics... He has interactions with Rick and with all the characters he had interactions with from the war. So you're saying that Dwight's never going to talk to Negan again. He's never going to talk to Eugene, never going to talk to Daryl. Like all of the characters that made Dwight, Dwight, like the first people he interacted with, like Daryl. Daryl was the first person he interacted with when we met him. And he's never going to talk to Daryl. And Negan was the person that subjugated him and made him ran away in the first place. He's never going to talk to Negan again, even though Negan's out of jail. He's never going to talk to... Ne like, Fear the Walking Dead limits his character. And maybe we, maybe that's so we can see a different side of Dwight, but it just seems weird to me. I don't know. Like, I, I figured they'd have to do something with him. Austin Emilio kept saying, oh, yeah, Dwight's not dead. He's going to be in something. I just can't tell you. And... <sighs> Now we have this announcement. So, anyway, let me know, let me, let me know what you guys think about this announcement, and uh, we will go from there. We're about a month away from the second half of season nine, and then I'll start doing more content. Um, obviously, the vlogs have been sparse since, but that's to be expected. Um, and again, if you guys have any ideas for vlogs, let me know. I'm always willing to talk about stuff. And go on rants. I mean, I just went on a mini rant about, you know, Robert Kirkman's ego. Where the hell is the Fear of the Walking Dead storyline going? Um, lots of stuff. You know, if it's Walking Dead related, I'm always going to talk about it. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you later. Peace out.